And now you get to ask these minds your questions. Whatever you have, please feel free to pass your questions to the ushers who are making their way up the aisles. And, uh, well, while we get those questions together, I have one other person who wants to weigh in in light of everything that's been said this evening. Yes. <clears throat> um, hi, um, hi um, my name is Brianna Logan. How are you? I'm sorry. I, um, I'm just like really odd to be up here and everything because um, some of y'all were like in my syllabus and stuff. Um, but I'm a student at UT and um, I just wanted to say that um, personally, um, I do consider myself an ambassador of goodwill um, at hostile events like this. Um, because, like, you know, for example, where y'all are, like, making fun of the president and stuff like that, um, I mean, first of all, like, I know that's okay, because, you know, there's a reason y'all can do that, and it's that we have freedom, because thank God we are in America and everything. Um, you know, like, I mean, just the fact that y'all can do what y'all are doing right now is protected by the First Commandment, and um, that's very important um, for y'all to remember that y'all would not have that if we were not for... Um, people like George W. So I just thought I'd add that. Okay. That's all. Okay, so do y'all have questions? or Because I'm really excited to hear about the rest of what all y'all think. Um, it's really going to be great and everything. I think yeah. they're censoring the questions now. Oh, are they? Oh, oh. <laughs> we don't do that here. It's other countries. Okay. Okay, we're going to get rid of Brianna. Uh, I would like to ask, on behalf of one of the kind audience members, uh, let's see here. Well, this is not addressed to anyone in particular, so please feel free to weigh in as you like. What do you actually have to do to get fired from the Bush administration? Tell the truth. I'll buy that. I think that's, that sounds about right. Pretty much gone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have another. Let's see. In the New York Times today, a theory was put forth that Republican presidents will never nominate a Supreme Court nominee who would tip the balance against Roe v. Wade because that outcome would doom that party for decades. Please comment. Well, this latest nominee, to me, I, I think Bush and Cheney were sitting in the Oval Office, and, you know, there's rumors that Bush is nipping again, and I think he had a few drinks, and he said, you know, it'd be really funny. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, the next guy, next person that walks in here, I'm naming to the court. <laughs> Paul, did you want to comment? Um... Well, I, you know, I watched um, Harriet Myers being introduced, and um, it was it was um, it was pitiful that uh, Bush uh, thought that he had uh, all this capital to spend, and uh, realized that he's already in debt, and and even even Pat Buchanan and Rush Limbaugh are 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 putting him down now, so. I, I think that's a, that's the blessing in disguise that he overplayed his hand, and um, and he started with John Roberts when he introduced him as th that he was qualified because he was a gentleman, um, which Bush realized because he saw Roberts enter a door that said that, uh, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> And in, in Harriet Meyer's case, he, um, um, he, he wished that he had sub, subliminal messages saying, she's really against abortions, uh, but I can't ask her because I have no litmus test. Uh, so the, the whole thing is, is, is such a farce that people who need to have some kind of, of perverse logic to it say, well, he's really nominated Harriet Meyer's because he wants her to lose so he can have the person who's waiting in the curtains uh, to nominate, uh, who I, I can't imagine it would be, uh, but um, it would probably be somebody uh, with dementia. 
uh, which, uh, which he recognizes immediately. They sort of, they wave to each other like people in Volkswagens. <laughs> I, am, uh, I came here tonight at great expense because I should be at home now watching Bill O'Reilly because I get all my columns from Bill O'Reilly. Whatever he's against, I'm for. Hmm. Well, this one asks, what type of employment will be available for George W. in 2008? Apparently reading the door of men's rooms or something. He's well, we don't want to lose George W. Bush. He is what feeds all of us. <laughs> who, who can we make fun of if George W. goes? And bashing him is fun. <laughs> and we do it every day if we possibly can. So I don't want to throw him out the window. I want him to stay till about the year 2020, when I'll be dead. <laughs> I'm, he's already been a, you know, he's dressed up like a, a soldier, and, and uh, he's been an oil man. I'm thinking cowboy. I'm thinking just get him a hat, let him wear a nice cowboy, maybe some job for uh, those things, whatever, with the chaps and a nice cod piece with the presidential seal on it. And just send him off on a horse in a desert somewhere and have him report back to us in about 15 years. I think that he might uh, get a job uh, making quilts in the form of swastikas. I know that, uh, that, that um, because his, his acts have been really compared to uh, fascism in, in pre-Nazi Germany, uh, Dennis Miller, uh, who uh, became a Bush supporter, said the reason was because he said, I came to New York and all the liberals were comparing Bush and Hitler, and I didn't think that was fair. And in this case, I, I do ag agree with Dennis Miller that there's a vast difference uh, between Hitler and Bush. Hitler was elected. <laughs> George Bush Sr. used to say, read my lips, and W says, read Mein Kampf. <laughs> Th thank you for groaning. I, uh, actually, Paul, I, th I think the Hitler comparisons are excessive. I think it's really a lot more like Mussolini. You know, <laughs> give him something to aim for, you know, and just, just don't give him the whole thing right away. <laughs> I, I think he, he deserves credit for being a recovering alcoholic, is by his own confession. And uh, until he, he was really slurped up the uh, sauce until, and was tiddly poo and so forth, by his own account, until he was 42, I think. Uh, when Jesus appeared to him, <laughs> is you know, is, is most alcoholics uh, see snakes or pink elephants. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, is God love him? Is is he white knuckled it by God? And he has what somebody said. Maybe he started drinking again. But anyway, what he has been doing, and what we must realize, because he is a recovering alcoholic. They live only one day at a time. <laughs> and so what makes him so cheerful every day, got through another day that's pretty good. <laughs> Uh, 
Well, while we're all feeling optimistic, do you think we will eventually prevail against the neocons when the deck is so stacked against us with the deregulated corporate-owned media? You know, it's, it's that kind of fun question that you get at a leftist event. <laughs> mm. Well, you know, no, I, 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 could, could we get a little more stride? I'd like a more strident question, please. Let me uh, see what I can do. Question, please. I, you know, it, uh, many of us here remember when uh, media was a plural noun, um, and uh, it <laughs> has evolved into a single noun as the media have become mo more monolithic, sort of like uh, in um, 2001, that monolithic uh, uh, thing. And um, I, I, I um, uh, by the way, you meant... Uh, Sarah, you mentioned the Fuck Communism that I published in 1964. Uh, now it doesn't have much meaning, uh, but um, then it was, uh, as, as Kurt once pointed out, that it was the juxtaposition of those two things that uh, conservatives um, uh, couldn't quite grasp, uh, but it became very popular on college campuses. There was one campus where a student held up a fuck communism poster for the graduation photo in the yearbook and at the last minute the administration noticed it and uh, said we can't have the alumni seeing that they'll stop making their donations so they airbrushed out the word fuck so that now he was holding up the, uh, said communism and so they saw that and they said, we can't have that. And so they airbrushed out the word communism. And now in that yearbook, in the senior class photo, there's one fellow holding up a blank poster um, who majored in Dada. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to drop the other shoe of, of that particular poster. Thank you. Did you want to weigh in about our future vis-a-vis -vis the neocons? Or are oh. we just... Totally oh, fuck doomed. terrorism, I suppose. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the thing about terrorism is that um, what, what I mentioned earlier, uh, that they have um, these orgasms that last 600 years and that uh, 150 years would be a premature uh, uh, ejaculation. But it's, it's just a, a myth because there are no objective standards by which to measure at what point a, what precisely at what point a premature ejaculation becomes a mature ejaculation. And I don't even know what a mature ejaculation is, but I think John Kerry has them. Uh, <laughs> Teresa, I feel some stirring in my groin area now. I said, bring it on. <laughs> Almost all the questions Quote the New York Times. They're not a Bible. They make mistakes. So I don't know why they just quote the New York Times. Why don't you send them some questions about yourselves? Huh? That's for next time's Q&A, I think. I think we should. All right. I have that. I have a noted, duly noted. I feel like I'm in class. Our well, just told me I have to do something. I'm going to write it down. Okay. <laughs> this is for art. You're, now you're really going to laugh at me. As a young person, what advice do you have for winning our country back? How can we compete with the money rich? <laughs> is someone playing a joke on me? Literally, I have a stack of about six questions, and all of them end in, how can we compete with the money-rich, corporately-controlled media? And ask Art these questions about being a young person. So, Art, you and I, I feel, are the youngest people in spirit up here. What do you think about this corporately-controlled media for the 50th time? Because that's what I have in my hand. And, to add my own twist, to rescue this, perhaps, a stack of questions, I'm going to ask you all, what you would advise uh, a young writer to do in these times, somebody, you know, younger than art, Stay but as young as me. Business. Stay out of our business. Stay out of the business. <laughs> a farm in Canada, maybe. I would advise a young writer, uh, avoid cliches like the plague. Mm. 
My advice to a young writer would be to write uh, every day. It's like learning to play the piano. My advice would be don't, uh, don't wait for some authority to tell you your writing is okay. One of the good things about the internet is you can go out and do stuff, and if it, people dig it, you, you know, you'll hear about it. And if not, you'll be another boring shithead with a blog. <laughs> I would avoid, uh, I tell a young writer to uh, avoid using semicolons. Uh, they, are, they are transvestite hermaphrodites. They stand for absolutely nothing, and all they do is suggest that you have been to college. Art, I'd like to give you the floor as well. Uh, two things. One is we're going to go back there and sign books, all of us. And these books are worth $10,000 <laughs> autographed. And they're worth 20000 not autographed. <laughs> but I'd like to say one thing because the main thing right now is laughter. And Norman Cousins discovered that laughter can be used for medicinal purposes. And doctors have studied it now, and they find that if you laugh, you feel better, your blood pressure goes up, and everything goes great. Now I'm going to tell one joke, and I'm going to test you to see if you feel better after that joke than you do now. A grandmother's on the beach with a little grandson, and a big waves and throwing the, the little kid out to sea. And the grandmother says, God, God, please save me. Please save me. Save me. The boy, if you save him, I'll do anything you ask. And another wave comes and washes the kid on shore. And the grandmother looks up and says, He had a hat! <laughs> now, do you feel better? Yes. Much, much better. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I want to mention quickly, uh, as Art said, there are going to be books in the $20,000 and $10,000 range, available uh, by all of the uh, people on stage. Kurt Vonnegut's A Man Without a Country, Louis Lapham's Gag Rule, Mr. Buckwald's Beating Around the Bush, Paul Krasner's One Hand Jerking, and of course, Mr. Barry Crimmins's Never Shake Hands with a War Criminal. These are all must-have reading, so please uh, support these wonderful voices and get your book signed after the proceedings. And I believe we should now thank everyone here on the stage. It's been my pleasure to share the stage with you.